Good afternoon. My name is Frank Monopolis. I'm a human rights attorney. I represent one of the prisoners at Guantanamo who's been held indefinitely without charge. Uh, Guantanamo is a shame, um, and it should have never been opened. Um, and the people who are there, the prisoners, should be released. And if the government wants to try anybody, they should try them in a, in a fair trial in a U.S. court. Minus 24 wind chill factor in Augusta today. And there are 18 of us here to say close Guantanamo. So just on behalf of, of the group that wanted to do this and put this together, thank you so much. It's in fact, as we all know, those of us standing here, the terrible things that have happened there have been perpetuated uh, by our government. I was able to get down to Washington, D.C. about this time of year uh, and do some fasting and some protesting with a group called Witness Against Torture. The group started when 25 of them went down to Guantanamo early on before we even knew the names of people there. People have been held for a couple of years. And I just wanted to share with you the words um, of a couple of the men who were imprisoned at Guantanamo but no longer are, uh, from a poem by Abdullah Anasi. Uh, he said, oh father, this is a prison of injustice. Its iniquity makes the mountains weak. In 1966, volunteered for and served in Vietnam. I would return to Vietnam in 1998, this time with a group of veterans, figuratively bringing all the branches of peace for three weeks, we rode bicycles with veterans from the other side of that war. Side by side, surprisingly, they seemed quite young, friendly and gracious even. I returned again and again to Vietnam in 2008, 2010, 2012. I have twice visited Mi Lai, the site of the single most horrific tragedy and atrocity of that misbegotten war where American troops gunned down over 500 civilians, women, children, elders. The more I became aware of the victims of our war making, of our militarism, of this country's behavior around the world, the more intrigued, you might say obsessed, I became. I visited Inuit people in Greenland who had been displaced due to the construction of our Thule Air Base. These people were given three days to vacate their sacred birth land, the home of their ancestors' burial grounds. They've never been permitted to return. I have stood in solidarity with the Chagos people of Diego Garcia in Parliament in Great Britain as they stood seeking return to their island in the Indian Ocean where we had built an enormous base from which we launch our bombing sorties over the Middle East and Afghanistan and elsewhere in Asia. And I have visited with Marshall Island refugees, some of the more than 10,000 who live in Springdale, Arkansas now, where they have found employment in the chicken processing industry. Escapees from their once idyllic islands, essentially forever irradiated by our atomic bomb testing. And then there's Guantanamo. Guantanamo represents the poster child of our unique exceptionalism. Incarceration without being charged for years, for decades, forever. What kind of country is this? Shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it down. Thank Shut you. Shut it down. Shut it down. Okay. I'm Barbara West from Bath, and one of my Long-time political associations has been with a group called Let Cuba Live, a long-standing organization here in Maine. Is the occupation of Guantanamo itself by the U.S. military it was extorted from the Cuban people in 1898 as part of um, the U.S. intervention in what was called the Spanish American War. It's been occupied against the will of the Cuban people for many years, since 1959. They have never checked, never cashed the red check the U.S. sends. To occupy it with a military prison, which violates every norm of human rights, 